So here we go on our, our next level of what we're working on. Um, like in the other sections, there's here's our globe. It's actually not drawn correctly, um, but it will work for us. Um, there's latitude, longitude lines. So one is that these two are, are the are the main pieces. This would be the equator. This would be you know whatever time zone in sense what it is. And um, the things to notice in this drawing, so half of it's drawn correctly, is that as lines as the eye goes this way, these lines start to curve, and they curve, and they curve. And they curve and they curve this is how you make something look dimensional is you actually draw that in or paint that in your pieces of artwork it's on a body it's on an animal it's on anything it's going to do the same thing it curves as it goes to the right side of my picture frame, a photograph, or what, anything, everything is that's circular is going to start to curve this way. Uh, elephant's belly, you know, everything. So there's my two spaces. Now if I take that and I tilt it, then I get something more corrected. So here's the point that you can't see, right? So this, this would be the top of the sphere. There's this straight line right here. See, it's a, still a straight line. And then everything to this side starts to curve. Curve, 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 curve. Everything to this side starts to curve to the right. Curve, 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 curve. That's how you make something look spherical. And then here, it's the opposite in one sense, is that these circles are equally spaced and they just keep coming out and out. They're ovals. And most of the way to make something turn or appear to turn is right on the edges. It's right on the edges. If you don't catch that turn there, it goes flat. See how it turns right there and then it almost goes, but by this time, all of these lines are parallel to the picture frame. And then it, as it passes to that side, then it starts to curve up, curve up, and then it cranks, it just cranks over there. Here you can see it all the way through, one side to the other. So here's your axis. There's a line that you're gonna draw, that you draw through something. It's an imaginary, or if it's it's a real thing on a sphere, like uh, the, the exercise balls that we have is a great example of, of how this works. What we're doing is we're trying to simplify it so you can actually see it and draw it and understand it. And then you'll see it everywhere you freaking look. Um, Again, as we as I go through these slides, stop at every slide or almost every slide and draw it. And then go to the next, and then go to the next. That's the only way that you're gonna understand this is you have to draw it. My quote is to understand the world is to draw the world. Hey, look, there's the world. <laughs> Here's that crosshairs again, right? It's also down here, wherever the equator is. The equator is right to here or here. Um, so everything, because we're looking down at this space, right? This is showing us that we can see the top of it. We can't see the bottom of it. We can see the top of it. That means it's below our horizon line. Our horizon line is up top even higher than this. It's below that, so that means we can see the top on it. So then all of these then shapes are they will they'll they'll all turn down, right? These these all go down. You know, then we can get super complicated and crazy and have a lot of fun. So here's a good example where we're looking down at the top and things turn tilt uh, one way and they, they turn the other way. So each one of these is giving the viewer information because if it was just the outline, then you wouldn't be able to understand how it turns. And they've also put shading in over here. So these, these are all spaces that are giving you information. 
So here's, here's a typical way of lighting a sphere. So we're, we're looking at light and shadow and cast shadow. So if you want to make something three-dimensional, kids are always asking me that. I say you've got to learn about light, form, and shadow. So without light, this picture would be totally black. There wouldn't be anything. The light comes on and there's a ball here. And so that's the form. The light hits the ball and it, by its nature of how it relates to the universe, it creates a shadow. There's a shadow on the sphere or the ball. And then there's a cast shadow because it's sitting on something. If this ball was up in the air being thrown, this would be the same thing, but um, there wouldn't be any shadow on the ground. So you've got a highlight. You've got, this is the area that's light. This is the reflected light off the shiny subject object. Goes into this shadow. So there's this, it's a, called a terminator. It actually goes from light to shadow. And there's a, there's a line for it, depending on where the light is and where the viewer is. You have this core shadow that gets the darkest, and then you have reflected light. And some artists actually make that, they make it up so that, that the space turns. And then you have a cast shadow. So this piece on the computer does that. This is what Photoshop does to it. It goes from that, and it goes into that. It goes from here. So here we have reflected light, light, shadow, core shadow, reflected light. If we take that into Photoshop and I break it up into sections, then if we were actually going to pencil value this piece, we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. You'd have to do 17 different values with your pencil, which is cray cray. Um, so let's see if we can dumb it down. So um, this is what you're going to need to have is like a roll of tape, like that blue tape, something that you're going to be able to lay something circular down on your piece of paper and get a circle and have it like, um, you know, have it be five. You could also use a compass. Right, so I don't have the picture of, of using a compass, but um, a compass is also great. But you're going to somehow get a circle. It could be a bowl, um, not too big, not too small. And so then here, what I have set up is that if so, once you have your circle, then what you do is you I call it ghosting. Um, there's a term for it in the art world. Is you draw really light. So even before you draw, you're moving your hand or your pencil over this area. And then you lightly draw it. And then you lightly draw this one. And then you lightly draw this one. So your hand already knows the mechanics of making an oval. And so I'm just kind of going around and going around and going around until I get a bunch of these. So I got a bunch of those happening. So then if I'm going to count how many values that I'm actually going to put on my sphere, I'm going to do, um, this is a highlight. You can call it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this value and this value are the same. So a lot of people make this too bright. They make this value like up here. It's not that way. It's on the other side of the shadow. Think about it. It's turning. The space is turning. So it goes darker, darkest, and then it would come up on the other side. And then the shadow is the darkest right up against your form. It's the darkest. That's the darkest of anything. And then your shadow goes lighter. It gradates out. Here there's just one, two, three, four. And then five could be the paper or the background. And so it gets lighter out here because there's more atmospheric light. And then what I did in Photoshop is I tricked it out, played with the background because negative space as is as important as positive space. So here's my negative space. And I did a gradation, right, from light to dark from dark to light, something like that. It makes it interesting, it changes it up. So, you know, if you squint, you wanna be able to see all the values. So this value right here is too much of a step down. So you'd wanna, you would wanna bring this up. If you had something called a 
um, kneaded eraser. They're kind of these gooey things. You can almost press the kneaded eraser right onto this and it'll pull up some of your pencil marks. Um, and then you wouldn't do, you wouldn't do a, a dark line around it because you just want that to be a value change. You don't want it to be a line. You want to, on this, you want to keep your line just on the outside of the sphere. Like that's a place where your, your line wants to live. So here's another example. Um, this is great because they're all kind of pointing the same direction. They're all, you know, they could be turned a little bit more, but this is great because they're not all, you know, they actually, you see how they turn? Turn, turn, turn. They're, they're, they're going directionally to this spot. And again, you wouldn't have it go darker here. You want it to go the opposite. Everything's going to go light, lighter down to this. This will be the darkest. And so this shadow would be darker. And again, it would be really dark underneath there, even if you had to get another pencil or something else. Um, this is on bumpier uh, map board, but it's the it's the same thing, right? It's got those vel those things, and then look at this with the negative space. So the negative space is where it's the lightest, right here, and then it goes darker right up against it. So the rule of the art world is light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Um, so you bring a dark, like you wouldn't have these two light because you can't see them. So you slowly bring it darker right up against the light. And then down here, there's the light tucked in where it's darker. And then this is the correct way of doing the, the shadow. Um, you can make spheres out of triangles. Buckminster Fuller's work is crazy. Um, the same concept, there's a light. And as, it, as the space turns, it gets darker. Um, big sphere work. And uh, let's look at some more. These are pieces then are, that are done on black paper. Same concept, just the opposite of that. So um, here's the almost the beginning of it, right? I've got a circle and then these lines are, are concentrical, like the spheres that we looked at. And uh, same with uh, what's happening here. So then, then here's the sphere. It goes from light to a darker and then there's light around it and the dark shadow. So these are a couple different examples. Um, the negative space is treated. It gets a little lighter up against here. There's our sphere, our shadows, cast shadows. You know, almost everything here has line work to it. It's all drawn. Um, so these are these are all projects to do on this. So you're gonna you're gonna work on. Um, trying to do a sphere. See all the lines that come off when they wrap around? These are contour lines. There's all these contour lines. And then you can go outside and you can work on like just doing some work outside on uh, pavement if you've got some chalk. See what that's like. All you need is black and white and then your, your cement could be the gray. So you very carefully outline a circle and then you put your values and stuff in it. So these values are, this is too dark right here. So you would want to go lighter. So you're using the value and you'd also turn it. See how it goes flat here? It just goes flat. This is where you want to turn it. Everything's going to turn on your, in your edges and your corners. And it wouldn't be such a hard outline. It would be softer there. It would almost blend, it would almost blend out like that. See how it disappears? So that's a soft edge. There's harder edges and there's soft edges. And then there's you know ways to do your line work so the line can, can hold in and support your form wherever it's needed. 